Hello and welcome. Today I'm joined by engineering manager Dave Costura and engineering manager Matt Nicholson. Now I believe you're both heavily involved in the implementation of the Caterpillar Stage 5 engine process, yes? That's right. That's correct. Yep. So can you tell me what technologies will be used to meet these emission standards? Sure. So at uh, Stage 5, one of the key things is coming in is particle number count. You know, that's something that I think everybody in off-highway is, is having to deal with for the first time, and it's going to require a diesel particulate filter. So that's the, that's the big technology. There will be other things that come in. You'll be looking at upgrading the engine in various different ways to get better uh, efficiency, but the, uh, the diesel particulate filter is the, the, the big technology that's coming in. Can you explain the difference between service and regeneration? Okay, Keith, the service and regeneration are two completely different things. So the surface is therefore ash what builds up over time, but our engines are completely fit for life, so there's no need to service it or touch it at all. The DPF regeneration is therefore the soot for the carbon, which occurs naturally in diesel exhaust and, and built up inside the filter. And we then regenerate the DPF at regular intervals and it occurs to some extent all the time. It's completely transparent. Okay, so how does the regeneration happen in a Caterpillar DPF? And how will this affect the operator? So the regeneration occurs with the exhaust temperature and with a reaction with the existing exhaust gases, which burns off the carbon or the soot inside the DPF. And it does this all the time as part of the engine calibration and um, configuration. So the operator doesn't know it's occurring. What steps are you taking to ensure that stage five technology is going to be reliable? Well, I tell you, Building our experience, and we've been building engines for quite a long time uh, in the off-highway environment. You know, we've we've got loads of engineers with years and years and years of experience. Uh, you know, building on that, we're using simulation as well, all the way from the very beginning of the program. Using that simulation, uh, we then build on uh, test bed hours. Um, you know, we're, we're running engines, 85 million hours of engine running time. Um, so we're getting loads of durability data. We're taking data out in the field using telematic systems. So we can then go back and, and make sure that the engine is performing the way we think it should. And uh, when you stack all those things up, we're in a pretty good place. We also validate our engines in the extreme environments as well. That's right. So minus 30 degrees C, 4,000, 5,000 meters, uh, running very low due to cycles, a lot of idle operation, just to make sure it's robust under all circumstances so the operator never sees the thing. Sounds like you're thoroughly prepared. Yes, we are. <laughs> thank you very much indeed. Okay, thank, thank you. you.